From the sectarian killings in Mambila and Plateau to continuing herder farmer conflicts in Zamfara and Benue, Nigeria is witnessing a spate of gruesome killings. This is, of course, even as the Northeast continues to be ravaged by the terrorist activities of Boko Haram. But even for those who are not caught up in these conflicts, life isn't easy or straightforward. Jobs continue to be elusive for our young, teeming population, who are also continuously facing harassment by the Police Special Anti-Robbery Squad, SAS. Our infant mortality rate is one of the highest in the world. According to UNICEF, Nigeria loses about 2,300 children under the age of five each day. Of those who survive, another 2.5 million suffer from stunted growth annually due to acute malnutrition. The catalog of the problems facing Nigeria is long, and there's no gain saying we are not where we should be as a nation. Things are not working, and some say it is because of the way we are structured. From big government, which is too expensive and unwieldy, and exercises control over too many things to the autonomy of regions. These issues are some of the problems that many believe have led to our dysfunction. For many, therefore, the answer lies in restructuring. But what exactly does that mean? Today on the call, we turn our attention to this question and a few others. But first, here's an overview of the issue. Nigeria is at a critical crossroads. Are the multifaceted problems of the country only solvable through restructuring? If restructuring is a solution, can all Nigerians agree on what restructuring would entail? There has been extensive debate as to what restructuring ought to involve and how far it ought to go in addressing perceived structural frailties of Nigerian state. Tonight, that debate continues as we seek to get to the core of the restructuring issue in Nigeria, with a view to ascertaining how much we seek to change and what might replace the elements being restructured in the country. Minerals, including oil fields, oil mining, geological surveys, and natural gas. This should be moved to the concurrent list. Mr. Chairman, this is a major recommendation. Because if this amendment that we are proposing is passed, it means that all minerals, including oil and gas, that are onshore will be vested in the states of the Federation. In January 2018, Kaduna State Governor Nasser Erufai submitted a report of recommendations on restructuring to the ruling All Progressive Congress APC after an inter-party committee on restructuring, which was chaired by him, had completed its work. The committee's report offered many conclusions concerning structural changes to the Federation, which include the transfer of several items from the exclusive legislative list to the concurrent list. Defend the Constitution, the Constitution of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. Of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. Since 1999, the nation's constitution has mandated certain developmental agenda to be under the exclusive purview of the federal government, and by extension to be legislated exclusively at the National Assembly. These developmental items are on the exclusive legislative list. In contrast, the concurrent list contains those developmental items which fall under the purview of state government that can be legislated on within state houses of assembly. Some of the items recommended for transfer included Food, Drug and Narcotics Administration, fingerprints and identification of criminal records, registration of business names, labor and wage-related matters, mines and minerals, including oil fields, oil mining, geological surveys and natural gas, police, prisons, public holidays to be classified as national public holidays and state public holidays, railways, as well as stamp duties. How might such changes affect national development? Apart from the local government issue that I have, I think should be think out with a bit. I have nothing against the recommendation. What I'm saying is that those who may derive it, uh, if you, in Yoruba, if you're going to give me clothes, I will check the one you are wearing. Uh, that would determine, that would con convince me 
Have you something fantastic or not? Additionally, Governor Erufai's committee kicked against the creation of more states as they deemed the proposal as a wasteful creation of subnational bureaucracies with exorbitant attendant cost implications. In view of national security threats facing the country, Governor Erufai's committee backed creation of state police along with greater fiscal federalism. But there are strong opposing views in the public sphere. Some key stakeholders alongside members of Nigeria's opposition People's Democratic Party, PDP, believe that discourse about restructuring ought to be national in nature and less exclusive to a political party. Opponents of Governor Erufai's recommendations assert that the recommendations emanating from the 2014 National Conference ought to have been given serious consideration and implementation. We got the best from Nigeria, first-class traditional rulers, professionals, the youth, artisan, market women, students, the academia, the labor, trade unions, retired police officers, military officers. In fact, the who is who in Nigeria. They were at that conference. And after argument for about six months, for about six months at times almost coming to blows, we finally reached so many consensual decisions one of them was this restructuring, devolution of powers. In recent times, the restructuring issue had falling down on the list of government priorities as the federal government grapples with challenges arising from incessant farmers' herdsmen clashes and other allied forms of criminality. This Senate must take it as a responsibility to make provision for state police. But with principal officers of the National Assembly and state governors in the affected regions now adding their voices to the call for the restructuring of the nation's security architecture, the honors is now once again placed upon what process would lead to the restructuring that is being clamored for. We have an authority that's in charge of the judicial system in Nigeria, a central authority called NJC, that appoint judges, the discipline judges, whether they are federal or state judges. And that's why you hear that, for instance, they are in Enugu, we have state judges. But nobody from Enugu had ever complained that his political opponents used those judges against him. The reason is that there's NJC in Abuja making sure that that doesn't happen. Mm -hmm. So if we structure our police in that manner, I'll have a National Police Service Commission that helps to appoint commissioners of police for those states, just as they do NJC, and then help in discipline them. And then you have at the state level the State Police Service Commission that this with the lower academy of the police. Beyond security, the debate on restructuring increasingly is cited as having potentially profound ramifications on economic development in the country. From resource control to efficient bureaucracy, many experts weigh in on the way forward for various regions in a restructured Nigeria. State policing may not be the complete answer, but at this point in time, it is the most crucial next step in the polity of the nation because of emerging threats. Whether you are looking at armed banditry from uh, Zamfara or you are looking at cattle rustling or you are looking at farmers attack, looking at armed robbery, look at terrorism, whatever it is, the argument can be made at the moment for the creation of state police. Where we are today in Nigeria is only somebody who enjoys the flow of blood that's going on that will oppose state police at this stage. Restructuring seeks to answer the question, which items should belong where? So many sides to the debate, and the process is nowhere near a conclusion. It is time now to get to the core of the matter.